السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر. الله أكبر الله أكبر. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسجدكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتئ الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن مصدر الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Indeed, my brothers and sisters, we are living in a time where we are surrounded with difficulties and we're surrounded with trials and tribulations and we're surrounded with things that distract an individual from practicing his deen and gaining nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is mentioned in the hadith of Anas bin Malik radiallahu which is reported in the Jam of Imam al-Tirmidhi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said يَتِّي عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانُ الْقَابِدِ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِدِ عَلَى الْجَمْ where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that there will come upon the people a time that an individual holding on to his religion is like an individual holding on to hot coal. It's like an individual holding on to hot coal. 
And we know the difficulties in you trying to hold on to something which is burning. But in that example that the Prophet ﷺ gave, he's informing that the individual is trying his best to hold on to it, but it is so difficult for him to grasp. And that's one of the times that we're living in, my dear brothers and sisters. A difficult time. A, a time where individuals are being approached with different desires. A time where individuals are being approached with, with different calls, different shubuhat. And you're trying to gain unity to your, to your Lord. You're trying to hold on to your religion. But it is very difficult. It is extremely difficult. You're being approached from different corners. You're being approached from different angles. As the, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned, the call of the Shaitan. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran that the Shaitan swore by Allah, "La aqudanna laka siratak al-mustaqim." I will sit. The Shaitan swore to Allah Azza wa Jalla that I will sit on your straight path. The shaitan is swearing to Allah Azza wa Jal that he is going to sit on the straight path. And then he said, I will come to them from the front and I will come to them from the back and I will come to them from the left and I will come to them from the right. So indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, holding on to your religion and being an upright Muslim, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for every believer. It's a challenge for the individual that wants to gain unity to Allah Azza wa Jal, but the individual does so, and he continues to hold on because he knows the promise of Allah is true. Inna wa'ad Allah haq, fala tabarrannakum al hayat al dunya wa la yabarrannakum bil lahi al ghurur. Indeed, the promise of your Lord is true. So do not be deceived by the dunya and do not be deceived by the deceiving or the deceptive individuals, yani the shaitan. So what can we do as believers, as Muslims and as believers, individuals that are trying to gain near to Allah Azza wa Jalla, what can we do that would be a means of us helping ourselves hold on to our religion? Indeed, my dear brothers, our Prophet Muhammad described the faith of the believer. He described the faith of the believer in a very important hadith which is recorded in the Musadraq in the Imam al-Hatim and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Bani rahmatullahi informing of the faith of the individual where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the faith the faith in the chest of the believer, it becomes worn and torn like the wearing and tearing of a clothing, a piece of clothing. When you have a piece of clothing, you wear it, you wash it, you wear it, you wash it, it becomes weak. It doesn't have the same strength when you first bought it. The Prophet ﷺ said that's the iman of the believer. It becomes worn, it becomes torn, it becomes weak down. It becomes weak after being with the individual for a period of time. The faith that you have one day is not the faith that you have another day. The strength that you have in your iman is not the strength that you have in your iman later on. So the Prophet said, So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to revive the faith in your chests. So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to revive the faith, to replenish it, to make it stronger once again. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, you live in a society where it's difficult. Everything around you distracts you from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it's your job or whether it's individual individuals that you interact with and engage with, whether it's individuals at your job, whether it's individuals at your home, whether it's your children, work, striving, making a means of income for yourself, that which is on the internet, that which is on social media, all of this is distracting the believer from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. So indeed, faith becomes weak in the hearts of the believer 
like the wear and tear of the clothing. So the Prophet ﷺ informed us that it would happen. And he informed us that it takes place. Then the Prophet ﷺ gave us something that we need to do to replenish and strengthen that Iman once again. To bring it, to make it strong once again. The Prophet ﷺ said, Fas'alullah and you jaddid al iman fi kulubikum. Ask Allah. Start with your Lord. Start with calling on Allah. Ask Allah to strengthen the faith in your chest. We should not become complacent. Individuals practicing Islam, practicing in Islam, and you feel that you're becoming weak. You feel that you no longer have the strength that you used to have. You shouldn't become complacent and say, oh, that's life. That's life. I guess I'm going to live weak. No, we do not give in. We do not become complacent. We do not give up hope. We want to be on a strong level of Iman. We want to have a strong level of faith. So the Prophet ﷺ gave us both an advice. Ask Allah to replenish, to strengthen the faith in your chest. Don't just give in. Imam Ibn Uqayyim rahmatullahi said in his book of the Fawaid that there is no being stagnant in Islam. There's no being stagnant. There's no standing still. A person feels he's not gaining so he feels he's standing still. Imam, Imam Ibn Uqayyim rahmatullahi in his kitab al Fawaid he said there's no such thing as standing still. Because Allah says in the Quran لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَتَقَدَّمَ أَوْ يَتَأَخَّرَ Allah says in the Quran, for those who want to go forward and those who want to stay back. And then Allah also said, Allah says in the Quran, we know those who are going forward and we know those who are going backward. So Imam Ibn Uqayyim rahmatullahi said, so there's no standing still in Islam. When you think that you're standing still, that means you're regressing. That means you're becoming weaker. So the way of the believer is that the believer wants to go forward. The believer wants to gain nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, so ask Allah Azza wa Jal to replenish the faith in your chests. Turn to Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Allah teaches us to do It is you that we worship and it is you that we seek your assistance. So the believer, first and foremost, when he finds that weakness of Iman and that weakness of faith, the believer turns to Allah and asks Allah to keep him strong, to keep him on the straight path, to keep him strong and to keep him on the straight path. Because of that, you have a hadith of Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet wasallam, also reported in uh, Jami'a Tirmidhi and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Bani, that an individual came to her Look at the way of the Salaf. An individual came to Um Salam anha, and said, Ma kana akbar dua an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa andaki. Individual came to the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, What was the supplication that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to constantly say when he was in your company? When he was in your company, what did the Prophet used to constantly say? He's seeking, he wants to know what supplication was constantly said by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said, Umm Salama radiallahu said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most supplication that he used to say when he was in my company is all turner of the hearts, Allah. O turner of the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. O turner of the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. And that's not only reported by Umm Salam, anha. It's also reported by Anas bin Malik, the famous command, companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anas bin Malik can, can, said, كَانَ يُكْفِرُ النَّبِي Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Allahumma يَا مُقَلِّبِ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِ عَلَى دِينِكِ Anas bin Malik said, as reported in uh, Adab al Mufrad by Imam al Bukhari, Anas bin Malik also said that the supplication which the Messenger of Allah used to say the most, O oh, turner of the hearts, 
keep my heart firm on your religion to the extent that Anas bin Malik he found or he heard this being constantly repeated by the Prophet why is the Prophet always saying this so Anas bin Malik approached the messenger and said Ya Nabi Allah he said Ya Rasulullah Amen bika wa bi ma jitta fa hal tukhafu alayna Anas bin Malik radiyallahu ta'ala he heard this statement this dua this supplication from the prophet so much he approached the prophet and said ya rasulullah we believe in you and we believe in that which you have brought do you fear for us you're constantly saying this dua Oh, the turner of the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. We believe in you. We believe in what you brought. Do you fear for us? And the Prophet وسلم, said, Inna, inna qalba ibn Adam bayna usbu'ayn min aswabi al-Rahman yuqadibuha kayfa yasha. The Prophet وسلم, said, yes, for verily the hearts of the servant are between the fingers of al-Rahman. He turns them to whichever way he wills. He turns them any way he wills. So the Prophet وسلم, he's a prophet from Allah. He's the final prophet and messenger. And even with that, our beloved messenger وسلم, used to constantly supplicate to Allah, seeking firmness in the religion. Turn to Allah, seeking firmness in the religion. Don't be complacent. Don't remain stagnant. Don't give in to the whispers and the, and the plots of the shaitan. Don't think that you are standing still. No, you are gaining nearness to Allah or you're getting further away from Allah. So this affair, my dear brothers, of asking Allah to replenish Iman in your hearts is something which is extremely important. Throughout the day, you're with your family, you're at work, you're driving, you're living, you're resting, you're eating, you're walking. And many things distract you from the path of Allah. But it is upon the believer to seek assistance from Allah Azzawajal, and make this to make him firm in his religion. So you, first and foremost, you start by turning to Allah. As Allah Azzawajal says in the Quran, Allah Azzawajal tells you in the Quran, he is the one that has beautified Iman in your chests. Allah is the one that has beautified faith in your chest. He's made it loved by you. When the believer will come to a level where he loves faith, he loves obedience to Allah, he loves the worship of Allah, he loves doing that which Allah has ordered him to do and abstaining from that which Allah has forbade. He loves it. Why? Because Allah has beautified that in his chest. Allah has adorned it in his chest. He loves it. And likewise, Allah makes disobedience. Allah makes disobedience and disbelief hated to you in your chest. This is a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. And because of that, we find the Prophet وسلم, supplicating to Allah. Allahumma aati nafsa taqwaha wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha anta walihu the Prophet said, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, give my soul its taqwa. Give my soul its taqwa. And purify it. You are the best to purify it. You are its protector and supporter. So the Prophet used to constantly supplicate to Allah. Constantly, the Prophet said, Oh Allah, I ask you for guidance, and I ask you for taqwa, and I ask you for chastity. Look at how our beloved Messenger, وسلم, the final Prophet and the Messenger, but look at how he used to constantly supplicate for his Lord, asking his Lord for firmness, asking Allah to stay on that straight path, asking Allah for protection from the shaitan from the distractions and the plots and the plans of the shaitan and his army.
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا so that is the first and foremost thing that a believer in noticing and realizing the reality of this dunya in realizing the reality of the shaitan and the plots and the plans of the shaitan the believer turns to allah and seeks assistance from allah and seeks the protection from allah knowing that allah azza wa jal is al habib the protector and allah is al qawi the all strong and allah is al aziz the almighty so the individual seeks that support that protection that defense from his lord tabarak wa ta'ala another thing that we can advise ourselves and our brothers and sisters as it relates to protecting yourself from the plots of the shaitan it's upon the believer to turn to the book of allah to turn to the book of allah to read the book of allah to understand the book of allah to live by the book of allah some of the scholars of tafsir they made a wonderful istinbat understanding when allah azza wa jalla in surah al-fatiha orders the believers to say ihdina sirat al-mustaqim guide us to the straight path that the believers say and we say it every single day several times a day we cannot pray except that we say al-fatiha in al-fatiha we say ihdina sirat al-mustaqim guide us to the straight path sirat al-ladina an'amta alayhim ghayru al-maghdubi alayhim wa al-dhalin we say oh allah guide us to the straight path the path of those who you have blessed not the, the path of those who are led astray or those who have incurred your anger so we make that supplication to allah every single day every single prayer some of the scholars of tafsir say the next verse in the quran after surah al-fatiha is alif lam mim dhalika al-kitabu la rayba fihi this is the book that there is no deviation in it huda lil-muttaqin right after surah al-fatiha Right after you asking Allah to guide you to the straight path, the following verse is Alif Lam Mim. This is the book that has no deviation. It is the guidance for the believer. Allah has answered your call from Surah Al-Fatiha by the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah to let you know that the Quran is the guidance that you are looking for. The Quran is that path that you're looking for. The Quran is that book that you're looking for which is the straight path. What you need is here. What you need is here. Subhanallah. Indeed my dear brothers and sisters, the greatness of the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Inna hadha al-Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwa." Indeed this Quran guides to that which is upright. Kitab anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. A book that we have sent down to you it is blessed so that its verses are reflected upon are reflected upon look at the greatness of the quran allah mentions that the quran is light the quran is mercy the quran is guidance the quran is a cure for the diseases of the chests whether it's actual diseases or whether it's medical or psychological or physical or spiritual the quran is a cure allah azza wa jalla says in, the, in surah yunus ya ayyuhan nas qad ja'atkum mawridatun mir rabbikum wa shifaa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatan lil mu'minin o mankind allah didn't say o believers allah says o mankind qad ja'atkum mawridatun mir rabbikum an admonishment has come to you a lesson has come to you from your lord قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ This Qur'an is a cure for the diseases of the chest. وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is guidance and it is mercy for the believers. So Allah describes His book as guidance, as a cure, as light, as the straight path. So where are we from the Qur'an? The greatness of the Qur'an. reflecting upon the Quran Allah Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Quran afala yatadabbaruna al-Quran am ala qulubin aqfaluha do they not reflect over the Quran 
or do their hearts have seals? Do their hearts have seals? Where are we from the Quran? We find our Iman going low. We find that we're going further away from Allah. We distance ourselves from Allah as a result. But where is our affair of the Quran? Where is the Quran in our lives? From those amongst us that go months, weeks, months, days, we don't read the book of Allah. The Quran is guidance. Allah described it as guidance. For the believers, a cure, light. And in the jinn, as Allah has been mentioned in Surah Al-Ahqab, and in Surah Al-Jinn, well, Allah has been said that the, the jinn came and listened to the Quran from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then they went back to their people and they said, Ya Qawmuna, inna sinna'na kitabim, unzila min ba'di Musa, musaddiqa lima bayni yadayhi, yahdi ila al-haqqi wa ila tariq al-mustaqeen. Even the jinn, they heard the Quran and then they went to the other jinn and they said, we've heard a book that's been revealed after Musa. It's telling the truth. It guides to the truth and it guides to the straight path. And in the beginning of Surah Al-Jinn, the jinn, they heard the Quran. It's the beginning of Surah Al-Jinn, they heard the Quran. And they went to their people and they said, we've heard an amazing book. It guides to that which is upright. It guides to that which is upright. So my dear brothers and sisters, where are we as it relates to the Quran? There's no wonder why an individual will become weak. There's no wonder why an individual would find himself being stagnant. There's no wonder why an individual would find himself not gaining nearness to Allah Azawajal when he has no place of the Quran in his life. And you had even amongst the Kufar, my dear brothers, Jubayr bin Mut'ab, one of the companions, he said a hadith when he was not Muslim. He said, I heard the Quran and he understood it. They understood Arabic. He was in the presence of the messenger and he was not Muslim. He was not Muslim. And he heard the prophet recite from the Quran. Were they created from themselves or did they create themselves? And he, were they created from nothing or did they create themselves? He said, My heart almost flew. He was an idol worshiper. He said, My heart almost flew when I heard that statement. They didn't believe in Allah. They didn't believe in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. But they understood the Quran. Even Fulay bin Iyad used to be a highway robber. Individuals used to rob people. And he said, He was trying to rob someone. And he heard a verse where Allah says, <laughs> Has it not come time for the believers, to their hearts to feel fear out of that which has been revealed to them from their Lord? And he was about to rob someone. And he heard the verses of Allah and he said, yes, it is time. He said, yes, it is time. So we ask Allah as we do to make us from amongst those that benefit from the Quran. We ask Allah as to make us from the people of the Quran. We ask Allah as to forgive our faults and to pardon our faults. We ask Allah as to fill our hearts with Iman. We ask Allah as to make us from amongst the people of Iman. Us and our families, our wives and our children.